May is a time of flowers, but it's also a time for the rites of passage. A lot of us are getting busy getting ready for our children's wardrobe to be ready for proms, graduations, and formals. But there's another type of preparation that you may be skipping over. And today on Tomorrow Life, you're going to learn about the risks teenagers face during this celebratory time and what you can do to protect them. Summer is also a time of costs, from what we're going to do with our children now that school is out, to our family vacations. Everything adds up quickly. So coming up, we're going to help you find ways to save by showing you how to eat what's good for you without spending a fortune, how to stay hydrated by eating the right foods, and simple steps you can take to save your skin and your life. This man's family has been bringing a tasty meat to our tables for decades. We're going to sit down and talk with Jim Perdue to learn what it's like to be one of the kings of the poultry world and why chicken wasn't always his passion. Writing is this woman's passion. We, of course, are talking about Mary Higgins Clark. Find out what a local professor said about this award-winning author, what she has to say back, and get a look at her latest work. We'll also sit down and talk with award-winning actress Swoosie Kurtz to find out which bird she thinks she's most like, a goose or a swan, and why. <laughs> and then once you've answered that question, we'll show you a way to mix two passions by combining reading with a culinary twist. Uh, how about that twist being this? Today, we're in the Del Marble Life kitchen making celery seed slaw. Maybe you'll want to wash it down with a cold one, but you'll have to work up that thirst first. We'll tell you about an upcoming bike and brew event you'll want to sign up for now. Del Marble Life starts right now. Good afternoon, I'm Lisa Bryant. I'm Jimmy Hopper. Welcome to Del Marble Life from the Stork Studio D. And Jimmy, I have to ask you a question. Mm -hmm. Have you ever been a waiter? Did they you... would never let me out there. I had to work in the kitchen. Oh, you, they kept you in the <laughs> kitchen. And the kitchen. reason I ask is, I guess it's because of this the story that I've seen about Delaware. Uh, it may be the first date, but it's right. the last when it comes to tipping. Did you hear about no. this? Yeah, it's pretty interesting. That's according to a survey done by a company called Square. Okay. It says only 37.9% of people in Delaware tip, and the average tip is 14%. Oh, my. In Maryland, 56% of people tip with an average tip of 15.8%. Virginia, it's 54% with an average tip of 16%. By the way, the national average is roughly 16.1%. And Alaska had the highest tippers with 17%. So we want you to go to the Delmarva Life Facebook page and let us know what you think about all of this, about this story. Do you tip? And there's, a, I guess I should, I should say that there are some, uh, this was done by a company, it's a credit card right, right, right. swiping company. Oh, so that's how they tracked it. That's how they tracked it, by credit card. So if people in Delaware, maybe they like to tip with cash. I, that see, would not count. I'm hearing you say 54 and 56% of the people who get served tip, and I'm thinking, well, that's not good. But uh, yeah. that's what I do. I pay with a card, and then I tip in cash. And then you tip in cash. So, so yeah, take it Facebook, for please. what you want. But, yeah, it's always nice to pay our, our servers because they do not ways. make... Don't make much, much money. money yeah. uh, it's all up to you. Now, speaking of uh, something to eat by this time tomorrow, you should be nice and tired after your walk at lunch. <laughs> tomorrow is National Employee Health and Fitness Day, and the Wicomico Executive Fitness Council is holding its 14th annual walk at lunch. From 11 o'clock until 1 o'clock, you can enjoy your walk, outdoor prizes, exhibitors, vendors, and demonstrations. Now, you can still register just by showing up, so get on out there. It ought to be a good time. Well, if wheels are more your liking, you can still stay healthy. This is National Bike to Work Week, and a ceremonial ride yesterday afternoon started the fun. There's only one bike route currently in Salisbury, right. but soon there will be two more, and motorists are becoming accustomed to these bike routes, mm -hmm. hopefully. Uh, Heather Towers rode down Beagland Park Drive and College Avenue, neither of which have bike lanes. She said, quote, I had no horn honk, so I can tell it's definitely getting <laughs> better. But yeah, bike to work this week. Yeah, beautiful weather for it. Gorgeous for it. Yeah. Take water. Stay hydrated. <laughs> of course, if a bicycle is still a little too lame for you, the Kent Island Elks Lodge is hosting part of the Maryland Senior Olympics. Get this. Both men's and women's horseshoe and cornhole competitions are going to be this fall. This is a qualifying year for the Biennial National Senior Olympic Games. This is going to be only the second time that any portion of the Maryland Games are hosted here on the Eastern Shore. How about that? So that's a pretty cool deal. Get in yeah, on that. Yeah, absolutely. Did you hear about the three mid-shore businessmen who are going to be getting a tip of the hat? Um, it's going to be across the bay uh, on Thursday. The 30th annual Maryland Small Business Week Awards Luncheon will showcase Chad Malkus of Cambridge as the Attorney Advocate of the Year. 
Uh, Rich Loeffler is a counselor with the Maryland Small Business and Technology Development Center in Y Mills. He is this year's district's director's unsung hero. And John Duran, president of Centerville Manufacturing in Centerville, is the small business exporter of the year. Wonderful job. Congratulations that to is all terrific. of them. Good stuff. You know the Schwartz Center uh, in Dover. Oh, Dover. Yeah, We've yeah, yeah. had them on the show before. Well, the Schwartz Center for the Arts is wrapping up their 2013 14 season on a high note. Listen I, to this. The Schwartz will host Linwood Peel's tribute to the marvelous Marvelettes and Drifters, two of the most influential music groups in the early days of soul music, in an event being called Remember the 50s, a tribute to the marvelous Marvelettes and the Drifters. Ooh. Yeah, does that sound nice? It'll be Saturday at 7 at the Schwartz Center for the Arts in Dover on South State Street. Tickets are $45 for adults, $40 for seniors, and $35 for children. Nothing I wouldn't like mind a little that. Motown. Want me to sing some of it for you? Uh, no, not really. It's a good idea. <laughs> the Chesapeake <laughs> House in Easton is having an open house next week. Pay attention to this. Uh, it's going to be one of the most meaningful things you'll ever do. From 10 to noon next Wednesday, there's going to be refreshments made from the Good Sense Bakery. Chesapeake Center's Commercial Baking Kitchen. Uh, uh, there's going to be a bake sale as well and tours of the center's varied programs. Uh, they're celebrating 47 years there and you can see how crab mallets are made, where the U.S. Navy buys their cloth for their nuclear submarines and how the local products are assembled. It's a tremendous program so go by and say hi. Have you noticed that the strawberries the local yes. strawberries Start are out. Oh my gosh, who doesn't like strawberries? And the Ridgely Lions Club is ready for you and your strawberry, I guess, <laughs> taste. On Sunday, May 25th, the Ridgely Lions Club will host their 35th annual Strawberry Festival at Martin Sutton Memorial Park. The festival kicks off at 9 a.m. with the fourth annual Strawberry Chase 5K Run Walk and a non-denominational -denom service mm -hmm. led by the Fish Locker Ministries. You've got a dog, I've got a dog. Everybody oh, yeah? needs a good guard dog, here's why. Just in case you have a deer in your yard, somebody has got to chase that deer away. The problem is, once that dog has run around for a little bit and chased that deer back and forth, <laughs> eventually the deer comes back to chase the dog. Oh my God. <laughs> How about that? Yeah. You figure it out. We'll still ahead <laughs> on Delmarva Life. Her name is synonymous with success. Swoosie Kurtz, you welcomed her into your family room. You may have even seen her on Broadway. She joins us later to talk family, career, and memorable moments. Mary Higgins Clark has sold more than 80 million books, and wouldn't you know, she has a connection to Delmarva. She's going to tell us more about it. We're all about famous faces today. Nearly 45 years ago, Frank Perdue became a national celebrity with his phrase, it takes a tough man to make a tender chicken. Well, today, <laughs> his son Jim continues that legacy. We'll learn from Jim what it was like growing up in the first family of chicken. But next, our teenagers have so many moments to cherish in their young years. But those special times can turn tragic when alcohol is involved. Teens, drinking, and date rape, what every parent needs to know about this risky combination. Delmarva Life will be right back. Delmarva Life is brought to you by Sussex County Federal Credit Union, guiding you to your financial future. Peninsula Regional Medical Center, honored to serve the entire Delmarva Peninsula since 1897 your local York and LG dealers, and State Farm Insurance. Like a good neighbor, State Farm is there. 